Hi, I'm Martin Jarvis, and once again, I want to welcome you to another perspective. Who are you? That's what we're going to talk about today. Who are you? Who am I? Who do we perceive ourselves to be, and why? Years ago, I was 28 years old. I'll be 66 this year. And, and I had, there was a pivotal moment in my life where everything changed. I realized one night that I didn't want to continue being the person that I had been. I joined the military at age 17. I would lived all over the world. I would done so many things. And, but there just came a point in my life where I wanted to change. And, and what I did, I didn't really recognize the fullness of, of the decision that I made, but I went to my apartment that morning. And I began picking out everything in my apartment that I loved. I had trophies, baseball, bowling, martial art trophies. I had things I had picked up in the Far East. I had jazz album collection, switchblade collection. I had all these things in my life that I loved. And, and I gathered them all up and took them all out to the dumpster and just threw them all away. And, and the reason, yeah, in, in, I realized that all these things that I had owned, I had defined myself by. The, the situations that I had been involved in, the places I had been, the activities that I had partaken in, that, that had become me. As a matter of fact, when I was in the military, when I would travel overseas, or live somewhere else, maybe for a year or so, I would take my trophies with me and set them up in my barracks room because they represented me. But, but at that moment, when I was 28 years old, it was a cold January morning, I decided I wasn't going to be that person anymore. I actually decided that I wasn't that person anymore. That person I defined myself to be, and I got rid of all that stuff. And, and I believe now, so many years later, almost you know, 40 years later, that was the best thing that I have ever done for my life. It, because it gave me the opportunity to determine who I wanted to be. And, and so when we're looking at the adversities in our lives and the things that we face, the things that are keeping us down from, from pursuing uh, our success and, and for being content in that pursuit, it is this perception of who we are. Okay? Why are we driven to do this thing? Why do we make the decisions we make? Why do we like what we like and dislike what we dislike? And, and so that's what we're going to talk about today. What I want to share with you today is, is that there are very few choices that we make uh, that, that are actually our conscious idea. Even the perception we have of ourselves, you know, which sort of moves us to make the choices we make, they're not conscious decisions, they're not conscious choices. And, and I guess to drive the point uh, closer home for all of us so that we can grasp this strange concept, is, is that how often do we participate in self-destructive activities, okay? Even as harmless as smoking a cigarette or drinking alcohol or eating the wrong kind of foods or not exercising, you know, when we know we should. Or even seeming to sabotage our businesses, ourselves in the workplace by making wrong choices, wrong decisions. Why do we do these things? You know, Maslow determined this hierarchy of needs and, and determined, and I think we all pretty much agree, that the most basic trait of, of every animal, including the human being, is survival. Yet, yet we do things, we do so many things that work against our survival, that are self-destructive, okay, that, are, that make our lives inconvenient, you know, in a sense, anti-survival. Why would we? Why do we? Why, why do we sabotage our relationships? <laughs> why, why don't we take care of the things that we really do need to take care of, that we know we should take care of, but we just don't? A lot of times our health begins to falter and then we decide we need to start getting in shape. Then we decide we need to eat right and exercise and all that stuff. But, but why do we do what we know is going to be destructive, that we know isn't good for our lives, okay? Well, well, you know, I just have to have it. I just have to have that cigarette. You know, I just have to have that drink. I just, I just have to eat that type of foods or whatever. But, but why do we have to? Why are we driven so hard? And that's what we're going to talk about today. What I want to suggest today is that 
everything that we do, everything that we choose to do, every thought that we think, every consideration we have based on something that we're facing, is it's not a conscious decision at all. It, the, we are being, our consciousness is being manipulated, being prodded by our subconscious determinations. You know, based on our environment, based on our experiences in life, the, the environment that we grew up in, every single, you know, we're told that, that every experience that we have cr creates who we are. Like, like even before you started watching this, you were a different person than you are now simply because of this experience. And, and all of these experiences, all these environmental situations that we're exposed to, they're, they're defined by our subconscious. Making us, you know, giving us the understanding or the belief that, that we have, that we make decisions off of consciously. And, and what I'm suggesting is a lot of times the subconscious determinations are wrong based on an environmental experience that we've had. Or, or we may have had a, a unique and maybe terrible environmental experience that wasn't normal, but, but we have shaped our subconscious, has shaped all associated situations with the negativity. And, and this works for the positive as well, but we're focusing on the destructive character traits, the destructive personality traits, and, and things that we do in our lives. Because we want to be, we cannot progress to the, the ultimate as long as we're being held down by these issues in our lives. And I'm, I'm simply suggesting that these are the issues that are affecting us from a self-conscious motivation and moving us to think and to be and to, to make decisions based on who we believe we are, but we're not. Now, now you might argue and say, well, well, I guess this is who you are. But, but what I want to share with you today for this particular talk it, is that you could change, okay, easily. It's not difficult. You simply have to recognize what's going on here. You have to recognize the, the battleground and, and, and why is it we seem to be destructing over things that we know we shouldn't be about. And, and so what I want to share with you is what you have the ability to do is first to recognize that we're all subject to the subconscious. That's why many of us are repeating situations that maybe were in the environments that we were raised in. Even certain abuses that we might have been abused by as young people, we, 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 we find ourselves as older people reliving those abuses. What I'm suggesting is that there is a way to combat those, to end those, that, that recognize first that we are influenced by our subconscious. Our conscious mind has no choice. We are influenced by our subconscious and our so-called choices are simply responding off of the subconscious uh, influences that are given to us. So, so what I'm suggesting today is that we need to be able to consciously first realize that our consciousness is being uh, is subject to our subconscious and then consciously make the determination to influence your subconscious. So the messages and the inferences that your subconscious is sending to you are correct or at least what you want them to be, okay? And, and so then, uh, even though at the time when I cleaned out my apartment, when I wanted to change at age 28, I wasn't really aware of what I'm sharing with you today, but this is in fact what happened. Okay, now, now so I had karate trophies, I had baseball trophies, I had bowling trophies. These things represented me from the time I was a young teenager. And, and so, so I would look at them every day. Whenever at the military at 17, when I would go somewhere, I'd bring my trophies. So every day I would look at these representations of me. But were they really representations of me? Or were they simply a representation or an image of a particular segment of my past life? Okay. But, but see, every time I looked at that thing, it was reinforcing that these things are who I am. So, so what I did that day, without even realizing, you know, the extent of what I'm sharing with you now, I removed those, those influences. I removed those subconscious um, products that were affirming that these things represented who I was. I had made that decision. It was a conscious decision I made to remove those influences from my life, okay? And, and then I replaced them with positive things. 
I, 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 I began exercising and, and eventually I began eating right. I, I began doing the things that I, I went to school and got an education. I began doing the things that I was supposed to be doing. At, at least those things I had consciously decided I really wanted to do. But, but in order to fully embrace this desire, I had to remove those subconscious influences that were already in my life and replace them with images of things that, that more related to what I wanted to be or what I wanted to see myself as, what I wanted to become. And, and that is exactly what happened, okay? I was speaking to a guy um, not too long ago who, who, was, who, who had suggested to me that, that women are more spiritual than men. And, and I'm thinking, you know, as a human being, that really doesn't make, you know, logical sense to me. So, so as we went on in our conversation, he was sharing with me how spiritual his grandmother was, okay? And, and how spiritual his mother was compared to his grandfather and his father. I said, okay. And, and he began to share about his son, who his grandmother, his grandmother, his son's grandmother, which was his mother, was a great influence in his son's life. And his son was so spiritual. I said, well, the, the woman he's married to now, is she more spiritual than he is? And, and he says, no, my son is more spiritual. I, I said, well, why is that if women are more spiritual than men? He, he said, because of the influence of my, uh, of my mother, his grandmother on him created this intense spirituality. So I said, well, there you go. So he's a male and he's more spiritual, but what happened was the environment that he was raised was a spiritual environment compared to the environment that his wife was raised in. So, so it wasn't gender at all. It was simply the environment that they were raised in. And that's what I'm sharing with you today. Uh, this young child bought into this environment. I mean, you can, you can use this concept that I'm sharing with you today in a positive way. And to be consciously aware of it when you have children. Man, man when, when my child came into the world, when she was like four, uh, my wife and I purchased this very large house in a very nice neighborhood. That was too large for us, but it was wonderful, wonderful neighborhood. Uh, we were, I think every, all my neighbors were more wealthy than we were. But, but we had determined early on that this was the environment we wanted our daughter to grow up believing this was normal, okay? And, and so she did. And, and as well, you know, I was back, back in, the, before I had made that decision to change, I mean, I was, I was a smoker, two and a half packs a day. I was drinking, I was buzzed, I was living a very destructive lifestyle. Now, now if I had, had my daughter in that environment, the, these, these things that she would witness me doing and that person that she would witness me being would have a tremendous influence and effect on her subconscious which, which would in turn create a conscious reality of hers that this is who I am based on the influences. Now, sometimes the influence for the, it may, I don't want to be like that or sometimes it might influence I am like that. And so, so, so just recognize how influential the environment is even for your children. And, and so it was very interesting when my daughter was like three years old, I decided I was going to go to school. I decided I wanted to get an associate degree. Now I was 50 years old. <laughs> but it was just, I didn't have to have it. It was just something that I didn't have. And I, and I always kind of wanted one. So I, I went to the local community college and just started going to college just to get an associate degree, a liberal arts degree. But, but, you know, after I, I, I earned that degree, I wanted to keep going. I went on and I earned my bachelor's degree. And after that degree, I went on and earned my MBA at 60 years old. And, but I didn't realize it at the time, but, you know, my, my little girl was watching that. And it was influencing her. Now she's 19 years old. She's a sophomore in college on her way to becoming an attorney. And because, because that was the environment that I presented before her. My son, the same. I remember my son had graduated from a um, uh, uh, private high school and he had gone off to college. And at that time I was a mailman in the inner city. And, and I remember I was in this neighborhood and, and, and there was this young man, my son's age, he was just sitting on the porch with his pants halfway down, you know, smoking a joint. And, and I remember my son had mentioned he knew this young man. 
But you know, I didn't even mention to him who I was, who I was the dad of, and my son and all, because I didn't want this young man to feel better, to, to recognize that he's just doing the same thing he was doing when he was in sky, high school with my son. And my, my son was off in college, you know, working on his future. Is the influence that this young man had in his life in the environment that he was raised in it was a lot different than the environment my son was raised in, okay? And, and so I'm just sharing with you then the, the impact of, of the influence of our subconscious on our conscious mind that, that not only are we subject to the proddings of our subconscious, but, but we have the ability to, to affect what our subconscious is grasping onto. Knowing good and well is going to affect our conscious mind. So we can consciously choose to influence our subconscious because we know that our subconscious is going to, uh, is going to influence our consciousness. And, and we can be a better person. Otherwise, we can just keep going around and around and around that same mountain with the same issues we have, those same destructive tendencies. I'm telling you, you don't have to. That there, there are ways about it, and this affects every aspect of life, from your relationships to your job to, to how much money you're saving or investing or, or, you know, or just what you're doing with your life and even the effect that your actions are going to have on your children. It's just time to check that out. And, and so then you can say, well, well how come then uh, in the family that I grew up in, yeah, you know, I'm, I, I'm a liberal and my brother's a Republican or, or I don't do drugs and my sister does drugs or, you know, where, where you have all these opposites. And what I'm sharing with you is, is that the family unit that you come up in have varying personality traits. And, 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 and some of them are, you know, what you call, uh, like in genetics, uh, dominant and some are not, okay? Some are dominant, and, 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 and not all of them are dominant. So, so as children, we pick up traits from our parents. Some may pick up more of this trait than of that trait, another more of that trait, of this trait, and as well, not simply the actions that the individual parent is, is actually uh, participating in, but the rationalizing and, and reasoning process is the thing that the child will garner. And, and so they will look at a situation and, and make a determination on that situation based on the rationing process that they garnered, that they gleaned from the family that they came up in. So the actions might be different, but the reasoning and rationalizing process that makes them determined to do this versus, you know, to do what might be right or even to do what might be wrong is that, is that process of reasoning and rationalization that they garnered from the environment that they came up in. And, and so this works in both positive and negative ways. You can probably look at your life and you can see. I know as a parent, you can look at your kids and you can see some of your good points in them and you can see some of your negative ones. And you also know how to deal with them and address them on those issues because you know that's how you were. But as well, you also remember how hard-headed you were. <laughs> and it may not be that easy. But so, so what I'm suggesting is, as you begin to adjust that environment, adjust your own environment for whatever your benefit is. I, I totally changed you know, everything about me simply by ridding myself of all those influences that were influencing my subconscious, convincing my subconscious that this is who I was, and replacing them with more positive things, okay? You can do that in every aspect of life. And, and the positive thing about your child is, man, they're sucking that in. They're sucking in that environment, just like you are, because it's their subconscious simply responding to the environment. So, so you then have the ability to determine what you're going to place in the presence of your child, what environment you're going to raise your child in, because you recognize their subconscious is going to be sucking into that, man. And so, so it's up to you then. You can determine whatever it is you want your child to be in life, okay? But, and create that environment. And, and, and that's what you got. But, but too often we don't realize that about our children. We don't realize it about ourselves. And so we're living our lives. We're, we're alcoholics. We're smoking weed in front of them. We're, we're doing things that are not quite right. You know, we're, we're functioning. We're eating the wrong kind of foods. We're tremendously overweight, high blood pressure. High, you, know, you know, they talk about how, how certain uh, physical ailments are, are, are culture-specific, you know, like black folks and high blood pressure or white folks just aging 
quickly, you know, and all these things. But I would suggest it, it has to do with the influences, the subconscious influences in what you're doing. I mean, you want to look at the high blood pressure and the diabetes maybe in the black community? Then look at the food <laughs> that these children are eating, you know, that their parents were eating or that their parents and their grandparents were eating or how they were eating it or what time it, the, the decisions they make as far as their diet. Okay, that's their, their subconscious is affirming that this is okay, even though we know good and well it's not. Why would you be destructive like that, man? I remember I used to talk to the kids at juvenile detention, and um, and and it would take like the first if I would have an hour to speak to them, it would take the first thirty or so minutes to to present in such a way so that they might realize that the lives they're living are not is not the way life is supposed to be. Now, now, somebody like you or somebody like me might think, man, they're locked up. They come in there, you know, in their orange jumpsuits, they're lined up, sit in front of you in these folding chairs in the gymnasium. They know their situation is messed up. But no, they don't. How, how can you? If they did, they wouldn't be doing it. Okay. It was very interesting, though, is, is that maybe they would be locked up. Say this was like the county jail type situation. It wasn't prison. So, so I'd be talking to these kids, you know, for maybe a couple of weeks or maybe a month. And, 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 and they're convinced and determined that, yes, I want to change. I want my life to be different. Because, because they're being influenced by the experience that I'm giving them at that moment while I'm speaking to them. I am the object lesson. I share with them my life, similar to what some of the things in your lives are. But, but this is where I'm at now because this is what I realize. Everything that I've just shared with you. Hey, okay, Mr. Jarvis, okay, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to change. We're going to change. Seriously. Some of them were just crying. I can't, we couldn't even believe they were in the situation they were in by the time, you know, our sessions were through. And they would be released. And three months later, here they come, right back in, filing in, in those little orange jumpsuits. Why? Because when they were released, they went right back to that environment of influence. All those influences uh, reinforcing and, and pushing upon them, motivating them to believe this is who you are. They fell right back into it. You know we've done the same thing. We've all done the same thing. So in many ways, smoking cigarettes, man. <laughs> I smoke two and a half packs of cigarettes a day. And, and you know, you know I, I read this, and, and like everybody else, I tried to quit so many times, so many times. So I read this little pamphlet and said, you want to stop smoking cigarettes? This is how you do it. You determine that you stop smoking cigarettes. Okay? But if you really, really, really want one, go buy yourself a pack of cigarettes. Smoke a cigarette, but only smoke half. And throw that cigarette, that half a cigarette, and that whole pack away. Because you quit smoking cigarettes. You just had a terrible craving. It's the craving that kills you because, because your subconscious is still at work convincing you that you smoke, you need a cigarette, you need a cigarette. So, you, so, you, so you've already determined you quit consciously. But this is your subconscious, man. You know you need a cigarette, you know you need a cigarette. So you go ahead, you smoke half. You, you've satisfied the craving. Now consciously, you're kind of disappointed in yourself because you broke down because you know you don't smoke cigarettes. And, and as well, you just threw away money. Now, back in my day, cigarettes were like 75 cents a pack. I think they're like $9 a pack. Now, you just threw $9 away just to smoke a half a cigarette to satisfy a craving. I guarantee you, the next time you have that craving is going to be a lot longer than it was between this time. And eventually, like with me, it was like, gosh, one day I just realized I didn't smoke cigarettes anymore. As well, the, the other you know, piece of that pamphlet was that pick up a sport, something that you did once in your life before you smoked cigarettes. Mine was the martial art. I went back to the martial art. Can't, can't hardly uh, be very sports active while smoking. <laughs> so, so when I began to practice the martial art, or maybe yours might uh, have been lacrosse or baseball or whatever, it, it was like you were going back and focusing on an influence that was in your life before you had that habit. So, so this is a, you don't smoke cigarettes anymore. And, and you're doing something now that you were doing back then before you did. Those are the influences that your subconscious is buying into. Look at it in every aspect of life. Yeah, I would suggest now getting out a pencil and paper and, and just write down everything on that piece of paper that you don't like about your life. I'm not talking about your wife or your husband. I mean, <laughs> that's a 
whole different story. I mean, about the things that are, that are about you, you know, and make a list. And, and just decide what kind of influences are you around, okay? Now, now say you're smoking weed and you don't want to smoke weed anymore. Yeah. You don't want to go sit around people who are smoking weed. <laughs> because that right there is influencing your subconscious. This is who you are. Now you want to go somewhere else. Say, say your life has been, maybe you got your bachelor's degree or something. You know, you know you should go to school, get further your education, but you don't feel like it, you know, and you got hanging out with your buddies or whatever at the at the club or the bars and everything. But but if you know you really need to, you're gonna to have to make a decision. Your subconscious is not going to make the proper decision for you. Because it's it already knows what it believes. And it's convinced you this is what you are. But you have to, what I used to tell the kids at detention sometimes. I would say, look, you need to close your eyes, step outside of yourself, and look at yourself, and ask yourself, is this what life is really supposed to be? Come on now. And, and so even as an older person, now you need to do the same thing. And, and recognize, no, this is not where you're supposed to be. You're really supposed to be here getting education. You're not supposed to be here blowing your cash, doing this, getting drunk every night, all this stuff. No, make that conscious determination first. And well, how am I going to do it? Well, first of all, you know, you got to stop going, you know, to those clubs. Man, man, when I had that revelation, you know, when I call it an epiphany, when I was 28 years old, you know, my best friend that I, that I knew since the eighth grade, that we worked out together, you know, we went in the military together, always around, always around. He, that guy didn't see me for a year. And in my heart, still my best friend, he still is today. But the reality is when you make that determination, you got to cut the ties to the things that are keeping you, those influences that are keeping you where you are. Okay? And, and so you, you got to stop going to those places. I stopped going to clubs, period. Okay? That was it. And, and so you want to get an education? To start, go to the library. Go to your school. Go take a class. Okay? Make sure it's in a class. Just take a class. It doesn't even matter what it is. Just take a class. And, and so what you're doing then is, first of all, you're removing this particular influence from your life. And then secondly, you've replaced it with something positive. It doesn't even really matter what the class is. And just begin going, and what you're doing is you're going to be... And sitting in classes is better than being online, if you can pull that off. Because you're sitting with people. You're, you're, you're parking in the parking lot with people who are like-minded. You're walking to classes through this crowd of people, to the various classes of like-minded people. You're sitting down in your class with like-minded people, being instructed by a like-minded person, taking breaks with like-minded people, going back to class with like-minded people. After class is over, going back to, the, to your, the garage to go to your car with like-minded people, you are changing the, the influences that your subconscious is buying into and that subconscious is, is, is reinterpreting these new influences to, to who you actually are, who to you consciously decided you want to be. It'll change. It'll change. Every single destructive act in your life you're actually being influenced by your subconscious and you can consciously make the determination to change. And you can be or become whatever it is you wish to be. How's that? <laughs> well, I want to thank you for joining me for another perspective. And I want to invite you to join me again. You take care. Bye.